did Nikon just make a huge mistake by launching a nice cheap alternative lens for the Z mount a 28-75 f2.8 was that a mistake now first before we try and understand whether it was a mistake or not let's understand what this product is what is this lens supposed to be it's a lighter more compact and a cheaper 24-70 alternative uh, in the form of a 28-75 f2.8 exactly like the one that Tamron have been making for the Sony mount and I think also for the Panasonic L mount so that is a question that's the product is it a mistake and there are largely three complaints about it the first complaint is that you know it makes two other lenses invalid because who will buy the 24-70 f2.8 which is the S line lens who's going to buy it because you get the 28-75 at such a much cheaper price at 1200 US dollars who's going to then go for the 24 to 70 f4 that's the first complaint are you making two other lenses excellent s line z lenses invalid because now you have launched this new cheaper alternative second complaint is that in it it's priced high for a copy of the tamron first generation 28 to 75 2.8 I mean, if you have to copy from Tamron, why, why don't you copy the latest G2 Generation 2 lens? Why do you have to copy the older lens? That's, that's question number one. And then when you copy the older lens, why is it priced higher? Because the Tamron is less than a thousand US dollars. That's the complaint number two. And I understand these complaints. The third complaint is, why can't they just open up the Z mount and just open it, open it up for everyone? Give it to, you know, Tamron, give it to Sigma. And, and let them make lenses uh, for us, for the Z mount users. I mean, valid point. Before I go in detail and try and answer these, these uh, questions, these uh, and sort of resolve these issues, I wanted to know that this is a channel where we talk about Nikon and street photography, portraits, and a lot of Nikon again, a little bit of Fujifilm from time to time. Uh, of course, there is Sony that I'm interested in so I talk about that as well but really the channel is focused on Nikon and the lenses that Nikon uh, have been making the Fuji lenses the X-T3 and wonderful Windrock lenses that they've been making for Fuji and also for the uh, Z mount so if you're interested in street photography or Nikon conversations on Nikon conversations on Fuji stick around subscribe and if you like this video do like I'd like to have you around as a friend and as a as part of the community you know so yeah so now, having said that moving on does this new lens make the other two s line lenses invalid well it's a 28 to 75 so you do not get the 24 now understand that 24 at 24 mm your field of view is much wider than what you get at 28 i mean it's really a a 24 mm lens is way more versatile especially if you're traveling or if you're doing landscape let's say you're in front of a big large architecture for example the Taj Mahal in India or the Eiffel Tower in Paris anything that's very large and you want to fit it within the frame a 24 mm is far more effective in doing that than a 28 mm so if you have to go for one if you have to get uh, access the 24 mm focal length understand you have to you, you will have to invest in another lens right so already this lens is a compromise you're starting off with at 28 not at 24 you can go and get the much cheaper Viltrox 24mm 1.8 or you can upgrade yourself to you know to uh, to a Z mount 24mm lens or you can go and get the F mount 24mm 1.8 G lens there are options but then you have to get spend money on another lens to have access to 24 mm focal length right so if you're someone who's interested in the s line lenses and three of them the wide angle zoom the uh, you know medium and normal zoom and the telephoto zoom 70 to 200 2.8 you would start with uh, probably the, the 24 to 70 then you'll probably buy the 24 the 70 to 200 then when you want to go ultra wide you will go for the 14 to 24 now, if you go for the 14 to 24, and let's say you cheap out on uh, the 24 to 70 and you should get the 28 to 75, this lens, which is assumed to be a Tamron copy, then you don't get that focal length between 24 and 28. And this, that comes in handy, you know, that comes in handy. Um, and that's your sacrifice, right? You'll have to change a lens from, you just to get a little more width, you'll have to kind of 
remove that lens from your mount and put on that wide angle lens. So that's a compromise there. So it's not convenient for someone for professional users. You'd probably expect something like a 17 to 28, which is exactly what Tamron has for the Sony mount, 17 to 28, 28 to 75 and 70 to 180 right so you see the compromises a little bit of compromise at the telephoto end there's a little bit of compromise um at the ultra wide zoom end so there are those uh, you know focal length compromises that you are working with when you go for this lens so and this lens is therefore accordingly priced so how is it attacking the s line lenses i do not understand it doesn't this lens cannot attack them on the other hand you're getting 2.8 instead of f4 if you upgrade from the 24 to 70 f4 right and you're giving away you're giving away that focal length the wide angle focal length and it's a slightly more costlier than the 24 to 70 f4 right the s lens it's slightly more costlier than that and at by paying a little extra you're sacrificing a little bit there and it's it's not going to be the absolute highest quality lens it's not, it's going to have a little bit of chromatic chromatic aberration it's going to have uh, not so much uh, uh, you know edge to edge sharpness it's not going to have the same i think it may not have the same, exact same kind of rendition that the 24 to 70 s line lenses have so there are compromises that you're working with already so it's not really making the other two lenses invalid from a product portfolio point of view now now think about the person the the person is going to buy it right imagine imagine someone with about three thousand us dollars to buy lenses for uh, their z cameras now imagine that guy thinking of getting a cheaper uh, third party lens and uh, to have that uh, you know normal zoom a 2.8 zoom a lot of such people including me i've been asking nikon to actually open up the mount to tamron and sigma so that we can get those wonderful um, cheap lenses from them and they're not only cheap they're very good right they're also very good so uh, so a lot of people who want that they are clearly not going to spend all that money in just getting one zoom right now they're likely to kind of spend that money um, in in a few primes and they're probably holding that money they're just holding back they're thinking okay when uh, i get that particular lens used maybe i'm going to save some money and go and get that right now by offering this lens that guy is being able to have access to a 2.8 at 1200 us dollars now he's still left with a little bit of money about 1800 dollars so he can get the 85 mm the 35 mm the 50 mm or he can go and invest in that spend money on that 100 105 macro lens right so he still has some money to go with and plan out his purchases he'll probably have three or four lenses already within 3k but if you were to buy, if you were to buy the S line 2.8 lens, you'll probably have money left for a few filters, and that's about it. And maybe just one, the cheapest uh, Z lens, which is the 50 mm, or maybe the 40 mm lens. So it does a lot for people like that, people like me. It does a lot for people, you know, the the beginner professional who's looking at a Z5, the dual card slot Z5 excellent z5 but he wants to have a cheap setup he wants to have a more affordable setup to begin his uh, journey with now for that it's great to see that nikon is not forgetting the the z5 users or maybe even the you know z50 users who are just using a z50 for professional work you can do that you can do that so um i think that it's great attitude coming from nikon Imagine it like the ZFC. It, it's it's really segmenting and understand the market very well, cutting it very well, and then providing things for everyone, for all of them, and not just being too snobby, not not just being too you know, uh, and and only catering to a niche segment who can afford that, right? I don't think photographers are very rich people. I mean, you may be rich, but if you're a rich photographer, you don't you don't represent the um, you don't represent the entire photographic photographer community. Most photographers are trying to figure things out. Money is um, not easy, you know. Uh, unlike uh, an investment banker, maybe, or, or you know, someone who uh, builds ships. I don't know. I'm just making up st stuff here. But I'm saying overall, it's it's important to understand that there are those 
people who want something like this and they could benefit out of that out of this so, great now the second complaint was that this is the copy of the first generation tamron and but it's priced higher now the my question the my answer to it is i'm i'm not sure if this is a copy of the first generation tamron because i've not seen you know i've not seen uh, nikon or tamron come out and talk about that we have not seen that happen so to assume that it is a third generation first generation tamron is probably not right now my good friend baron ha uh, wrote a comment on my channel i'm just reading that and he makes a very similar pro- point he says unless you know something that i do not i do not think this new nikon lens is a tamron lens at all nikon is an optics f- company first and foremost and they would never outsource an oem lens to another manufacturer they pride themselves on grinding their own glass this would be a change in the core culture of the company i do not believe that this is a tamron lens and i kind of understand where he's coming from uh, the 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 ed similarity between this and the tamron lens is something uh, out there for everyone to observe but i'm not sure if this is really a tamron copy this could be nikon learning from the market and sort of quickly coming up with solutions for the larger market which is a great thing so um no look the truth could be could go could go either ways we we don't know the reality is that none of them have come out and said claimed you know none of them have claimed that this is a tamron copy so this is an assumption this is a calculated assumption it is an understandable assumption but it is still an assumption so let's not let's not stick to this argument for a very long time the third question was why can't nikon just open up the mount see it it makes no sense for nikon to open up the mount if they can give you give us the lenses that the third party companies are making for us making for sony especially if they if nikon can learn from them quickly and just implement those lenses why not i mean then i don't need a tamron because you know you see look at the sony mount when you have you use a sigma the sigma lenses are not the best auto focusing lenses for sony it's a tamron lenses i think the reason why tamron focuses better than sigma surprisingly could be uh, because sony is actually a shareholder in tamron and i don't think they're they hold any stake in uh, in sigma so that could be a reason you know sony could be kinder to tamron and help them with the lenses a bit i i i do think that uh, when you use a third party lens there is always a need for you know to to ensure that the lenses and the bodies are always compatible the need for constantly upgrading and the performance can go up and down which is not the same when you have a you know oem lens uh, you don't have to worry about that you don't have to worry about whether nikon is going to kind of cut out the third party lens completely and it's not going to work with the camera anymore you do not have to worry about all those things um and uh, and we have seen that how you know when you are shooting uh, in a fast paced scenario and your a1 if you own a sony a1 and it can shoot at 30 frames per second but just because you were using a tamron lens maybe the 150 to 500 tamron lens you can't shoot at 30 frames per second you can you're capped at 15 frames per, frames per second that's because sony has every right to ensure that you know the best performance is unlocked only for a sony lens and that's understandable um and like i said a third party lens comes with some compromises some compromise although there are some fantastic third party lenses the compromises is something that we need to be aware of now if nikon can learn from those third party lenses man lens manufacturers if nikon can give us something very similar maybe at 10% more price but without any without any of the problems that comes with the third party lens in future we're going to have a something like a z8 or even a very fast z7 3 and z63 and they may be very well prepared to for sports photography wildlife and bird photography and you want your telephoto lenses to give you that 20 frames per second to to give you that 30 frames per second if the bodies can do so then you wouldn't want to spend about that 1000 and 1200 us dollars and you know not be able to take take the full advantage of the camera uh, i think that's a suboptimal scenario keeping that in mind this is a much better solution even if 
even if this is a tie up with Tamron I don't care as long as it's it's a Nikon made Z mount lens I think it's going to do much better than a third party made Z mount lens any day doesn't matter how Nikon do it, it for me personally it doesn't it, it does it doesn't matter to me because look if you have to access that 900 US dollars Tamron 28 to 70 you can do that by buying a Sony camera you'll be you'll be spending that extra money to get a new Sony camera about 2500 US dollars and then you may you may be a Nikon user you don't like the Sony colors and other things so much just because of that lens you have to invest in a, in another system isn't it much better that instead of spending all that much all that money for accessing that lens you're able to access that lens by paying a little bit extra maybe $200 extra right isn't it much better i think it's a very good balance so therefore i do not think it's a mistake at all it's just that there are now three options choose what suits you choose what suits your budget choose what suits your needs it's more options guys how can more options be problematic it's not i don't think so at all so see you again with another video